Alrighty guys, welcome back to the, uh, the Outcast podcast. This is live, but I am not streaming to anyone. This is a private stream, so just note that. Uh, second off, I am a little bit under the weather. My voice is killing me right now, but I need to make this video. Um, link to the article is in the description box below. Please go check that out if you want more information or read the whole thing. But I'm going to be kind of keying in on a few points here that I found to be uh, fairly important in my opinion and what I kind of think is more or less kind of just the important stuff for me to mention um, about the hobby and what Hasbro is potentially doing. This is a theoretical, this is a possibility, it's not a locked in place thing yet but it is something to be you know noting this time. So basically um, Hasbro's talking about cutting costs and quality. Um, quote, we're not just talking about nickels and dimes. Uh, don't know how to pronounce that name. And quote, uh, quote, we're talking about materials move, moves that uh, we can make on product cost. End quote. Uh, she pointed at the company's recent review of Nerf products. Nothing that the company analyzed that's oh noting don't freaking noting it's f like five almost six o'clock in the morning guys give me a break noting that the company analyzed everything from the thickness of its plastic keyword right there the thickness of plastic it uses uh, to the type of packaging and compared those to the cost of competitors okay let's take that one sentence right there that one note from the thickness of its plastic, uh, it uses to the type of packaging and compared it to competitors. Let's take that one piece right there and let's just talk about that for a minute. We've always said that Hasbro usually holds a higher quality standard compared to other blaster brands, generally speaking. Uh, like its competitors, including X-Shot, Dart Zone, Zuru, and a few others uh, that I don't have the brain capacity at the moment because it's early in the morning to, uh, to even remember. But uh, Hasbro's always kind of kept a higher quality standard. And even with Elite 2.0, that standard dropped so much that it was I, was, I would argue personally, it was below the standard of other companies. Including Dirt Zone, including Zero, and including X Shot to a certain degree. Freaking X Shot, X Shot, freaking the the launch shot from X Shot had cracked plunger tubes, and I would argue that some blasters had worse quality than that from Hasbro. My point being is that Hasbro with Elite 2.0, in my opinion, ruined the reputation destroyed the Nerf brand by doing that. It was terrible to see, horrible to do, and Hasbro got a lot of crap for it, for good reason. Um, so, I really hope this isn't going to go into effect. Um, continuing, at every step of the Nerf production process, the company found it was spending more than its rivals, uh, again, end quote, don't know how to pronounce that name. Not even going to attempt to it. So, yes, you are spending more, but you're getting better quality. It's the same reason why usually when you spend more money on a vehicle, you're going to get a higher quality vehicle compared to spending less money on a vehicle and getting a crappier car. That's why if you get a $2,500 car compared to a $20,000 car, the $20,000 car, I can promise you, is more than likely going to be in better shape than the $2,000 car. And that's just because of quality control. Generally speaking, um, you can always be like, well, if the car is completely destroyed, it's a really rare car and it's just for 20 grand and it's in rumble. It's like, shut up. I'm generally speaking here. Um, continuing, uh, Hasbro uh, compiled a list of 40 cost saving ideas from Nerf, uh, the Nerf review. It 
if it tops eight of the largest ideas, it will save about ten million dollars. Uh, end quote. She said, Hasbro is also analyzing whether those ideas would harm the quality of its products. If the answer is no, we're making the change. She said. Now here's the thing, and here's the problem with this: their idea of harming their products might be different than our idea of harming the products. So that can mean, well, the thickness of the plastic still is good enough. It you know it holds everything together. It doesn't break all the time. That's good enough for us. In our eyes, we see less quality, and we see thinner pl plastic, which means it's cheaper. But selling it if it not for more, so that's freaking annoying and bothersome to me. Now we all saw what E2.0 did, and honestly speaking, I think we all knew that it was a big disappointment. Yeah, a few good blasters came out of it, but we had a lot of issues with it, and uh, I'm not okay with it. I'm not okay with the the laziness, the the crap that's gone on. And I can't be. Um, it goes on about a few more things. Uh, in my reading, I didn't see anything else doing, dealing with, you know, the nerf stuff. But, uh... So... Uh, it has been a recent, uh, well, streams, uh, in part companies, so, this television film, yeah, yeah, yada, this is, again, this is nothing off with our thing, but I would argue that, you know, this statement right here, I would argue that, that I wouldn't agree with that. I just, I don't agree with the statement. Um, I think in 2019, 2020, and hell, even in 2023, some of the biggest things, at least even in the Nerf hobby, just generally speaking, in the Nerf hobby, were coming out. You know, the Strife X came out. The Omnia came out. Uh, Mark IV, uh, a few other Dark Zone Blasters, X-Shot stuff. Uh, Zuru Skins stuff was coming out still. The stuff has been making its move, and I think a lot of people... I think this kind of just said for bullcrap reasons, in my opinion. I'm not staying any of this as fact. Uh, if you guys want to go read the article, again, it's down in the description box below. Um, you just have to copy the link. But I kind of want to just talk about how this is going to affect our hobby and the future of it. So... Here's what's probably going to happen. And I really don't want this to happen. This is probably going to... If they go through with this... This is a hypothetical. If they go through with this, and they do start to stop using the you know good thickness of pla plastic in their blasters, and um, start to cheap out again, we all know where it's going. This is going to be like an Elite 3.0 at that point. It's going to be more trash. It is going to be waste. It's going to be landfill. And it's sad to see that. I really don't want it to go that way. My hope is that it won't go that way. I'm a fairly realistic person here when it comes to talking about hobby stuff and everything like that. So I can give you my honest opinion on what I think is going to happen. I think Hasbro is going to cheap out in a certain series. I don't know what series. I don't know what the series they have coming up besides N series is. Um, I don't know if they're doing any more Pro Blasters. Because I don't look into leaks. I don't do leaks. I don't look into them. But my guess is that Hasbro is going to pick one of those series and purposely cheap out in that series on purpose. Um, lack of paint, lack of possibly lack of screws, possibly clip together blasters again. And uh, I don't think, realistically speaking, that, you know, there's too much hope for them not to do it, because why would they not do it? 
Now, I get it. They're a corporation. They have to make money. That's kind of the purpose of, a, of owning a corporation. Now, what I don't agree with is the scummy business practice and the dropping of quality of a product. If you are purposely dropping the quality of a product, but your prices are still going up, well then, that's another story. Now, when you look at OE 2.0, blaster prices were, uh, you could argue, somewhat reasonable. They weren't bad. They weren't great, though. Um, some of them were just flat out unacceptable. And, uh, you know, the Volt, I, you know, that was you know, all right. The Warden, the blue one, the original one that came out was like $28, almost 30 bucks. It was like 32 bucks of tax when I bought mine in person. Online, it was even more expensive because of shipping. So, it's very frustrating. Um, when you look at that and you look at, you know, prices in the past, a strife used to cost 20 bucks. A strife right now should cost $25 if you look at inflation. Maybe 26 or 27 shouldn't cost 35 bucks. I tell you that right now. Um, and again, I get it. I get it. You're, you're a business. But at the same time, guys, we have to remember people who market stuff are not our friends they are not the, the the marketing team at Hasbro they want us to spend our money there not necessarily want to give us a good product they're just there to sell it and I think a lot of people forget about that so stay sharp my friends do not be stupid um, vote with your dollars wisely and uh, that's all I really have for this video if you guys want to help support the channel because this video is probably not going to do very well uh, you guys can hit the like button, share this video, or stream, uh, <laughs> and also, uh, if you want to, uh, please consider subscribing, it is free, you guys can always change your mind over and unsubscri unsubscribe, but hey, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one, because remember, as always, the hair might be fake, but the reviews aren't, and neither are my opinions, stay safe, God bless, phase one foam, signing off.